Welcome to Hobby with Ollie. My name's Ollie, and this is my hobby. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Death Company Marine and cover some things I learned along the way about lighting, non metallic metals, and not worrying so much about your mistakes. Let's get started. The effect I'm going for today is what's called non-metallic metal, or NMM, and I'm looking for a kind of shiny metallic black. A lot of the images and tutorials I could find for black non-metallic metal used a cold colour palette, blues and purples highlighting up to white. And while these do look really good, it's not the look I was going for. I really wanted to replicate the effect shown on this page of the Blood Angels Codex supplement. Here we can see the reddish brownish hues in the reflection of hardened ceramite. It really gives a sense of impending doom and upcoming slaughter. So with that in mind, the first step is to get some reference images so that we can start painting our model. It's quite a common technique to begin the NMM process by taking pictures of your model from all sides under a bright light. A lot of places also like to use gloss varnish, but I've had mixed results with varnishes in the past, so I decided to skip that step. I have my models being lit from above and to the right when viewed front on. It's important if you're painting large squads to consider if you want to keep a consistent light source. Here are some of the pictures I took for my model. As you can see, there are spots that are nearly white in the pictures on his jump pack and left arm, especially on the shoulder pad, and also bright areas running down the length of both his legs. There are some fantastic tutorials out there for black NMM. Shoutouts to Juan Hidalgo Miniatures, Darren Latham, back before his videos disappeared into the warp, and Miniac for some of my favourites. I'll have a link to some of the key resources I used in the description down below. For the paints I used to get my effect, I started from a base coat of Chaos Black Spray. Now it's always a good idea to use either a rattle cam primer or some other kind of airbrush primer if you have access to that, um, as it's really going to stick to your model and give you a really solid foundation to come back to. Once I've got that layer on, what I then did is went over the whole model with a Baden black. Now you might think this is a bit strange putting black on top of black, but it is a key step to make sure that our model's finish looks the same all over. When we're fixing up bits of the model that we may get wrong when we're doing our highlights, we're going to be using a bad and black as we can't get the paint directly out of the spray can for chaos black. Maybe if I spin the can, I can. Oh, no, no that's, that's not going to work. With our priming done and our layer of a bad and black applied, it's time to start thinking about the red highlights on our armor. I'm going to be using the paints you can see on the screen from Citadel, but if you have paints from another manufacturer that you prefer, feel free to use those. They should work just as well. First, a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide and Evil Sun Scarlet. Pure Evil Sun Scarlet on its own. Jacaro Orange. And Jacaro Orange and Wraithbone mixed 50-50 for the final layer and edge highlights. For the first layer, I'm using Rhinox Hide and Evil Sun Scarlet in a 50-50 mix. I'm using a size 1 brush and being pretty liberal with where I apply my highlights. Make sure to refer to your images to see where the light is reflecting off, and touch up any mistakes with a bad and black. For the next layer, we're going to use Pure Evil Sun Scarlet. Apply this in much the same way as the previous layer, but try to keep to the centre of your previous highlights. You want to leave some of the previous layer showing through around the edges. Next, we'll do the same with Chikera Orange, but keep inside of your Evil Sun Scarlet. And finally, the same with a 50-50 mix of Jacaro Orange and Wraithbone, which is a nice warm off-white.
I did end up switching to a smaller brush at this stage, a size triple zero, just because some of the details are very small. Now comes the next step, glazing. Put simply, a glaze is designed to smooth out the transitions between the colours we have applied so far. We'll start from the darkest colour. Using our Rhinox Hide Evil Sun Scarlet Mix, add water to it until it gets very thin and transparent. You can test this on the back of your thumb. Once you can hardly see the colour, and you've tinted your thumbnails for all your co-workers to puzzle out tomorrow, you have the right consistency. This isn't an exact science, different paints are going to need more or less water, and lighter colours tend to be harder to glaze than darker ones. Once you have your glaze paint, we are going to add it to our model. Start by wicking off the excess moisture from your brush onto a piece of kitchen paper. This may seem counterintuitive at first, as we just added a bunch of water to it, but it is essential for getting the glazing to work. Start from the darker colour, in this case our first highlight of 50-50 Rhinox Hide and Evil Sun Scarlet, and gently drag your brush from darker to lighter colour, which will help to create a middle ground between them. Where the darker paint starts to darken the lighter one at the edges, and we keep doing this until we end up with a smooth transition. Once you're happy with your effect, it's on to the next colour. Evil Sun Scarlet, which we're going to glaze in exactly the same way into our orange layer. At this point, you can see what happens if you forget to wick off the water from your brush, but with the quick application of a dry finger, the paint is so watery it should come off with no ill effects. Once we're done with our Evil Sun Scarlet Glaze, we're going to do exactly the same thing going from the Jacaro Orange into the Jacaro Orange Wraithbone Mix. Now one important thing about painting minis is that there are always things that you can improve. For me, on these models, I would probably add in additional layers to blend the transition from my black into my first highlight. For now, however, I'm pretty happy, but who knows, maybe I'll revisit it in the future. Let me know what you think of my efforts down in the comments below. Next, we need to edge highlight. So far, we have a pretty cool effect without needing too much manual dexterity. This step is a little more challenging, but with some tips, hopefully you'll find it a bit easier when it comes to painting your minis. We want to create clear separations between all of the different armour panels on our Marine's armour. Get your smallest brush and add your 50-50 mix of Jacaro Orange and Wraithbone to all the edges of the panels. Again, thin down your paint so it flows smoothly off your brush, not down to glaze consistency, just a couple of drops should do. And take a deep breath when you're going close to the areas where we've applied our other highlight colours. It's very easy to fix up the black later on, it's a little more challenging to fix up the other colours. If you do make a mistake, just go back in and fix it with the closest colours that you can find. We're also going to use our Abaddon Black in the lines between any of our armour panels. This will create a contrast that will really make the armour panels pop, as we have the very brightest colour on our model right next to the very darkest. As you can see here, I make some pretty poor attempts at edge highlights the first time, but with the appliance of a bit of Abaddon Black and Abaddon Black into the recesses, I can create highlights Darren Latham would be proud of. Okay, maybe I won't go that far, but they are a lot better than they were before. Here you can see the completed effect on the leg of this marine, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks really cool, and we've got that sort of red sun effect that I was going for. I also did a full model off camera so you can see the effect. And so there you have it my tutorial for black NMM under a red sun. A few things to bear in mind if you're thinking of trying this technique for yourself. NMM is one of those weird things where it looks terrible right up until the point where you finish the final edge highlights and then suddenly it'll jump out at you. If you're quick enough, you can save a lot of disasters by wiping the paint with your finger, but even if you don't, a couple of brush strokes will sort out even the worst slip. It's only layers of paint, so just get in there and fix it up. If you are planning on giving this a go, let me know how it turns out down in the comments below, and subscribe to my channel to see what I come up with next. Until then, I have been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I will see you next time.